Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com, and today I want to keep talking about using the smudge tool for paint blending. To help you guys out, I have created three tool presets, which I'm going to include in a download. So if you want to follow along with this or use this in your own paintings, just make sure and download the file at the bottom of the post. And if you don't know how to load tool presets, just search it in Google, it's super easy. But as a quick reminder, if you look below the post, you'll find links for free brushes and worksheets, as well as in-depth premium series available in the Control Paint store. So to give an example of how these work, this is a pretty standard scenario. You have three different planes of value, and you want to control the transition from one to the next. So I'm going to first use the narrow smudge, and this one was featured in the last video. So if I just run this narrow smudge brush over top of the seam here, you can see it gives a nice smoothed off look. This would be a pretty direct correlation to the way that I would do on screen blending. It doesn't look painterly, it just gives you a nice gradation transition. The larger the diameter, the bigger the effect, which would in a sense give you a slower fall off. You're sort of rounding off the form even more. And then of course I'm using the Sample All Layers button so that I'm painting on a separate layer and I can erase away what I don't want with the eraser tool. Okay, so that's the first. Now I'm going to use the Broken Smudge. Let's see what that one looks like. Okay, so this one is a lot more visible with its brush marks. It has sort of a rounded off triangle as the brush head. And the result this gives you is a little bit like a rock. Because the fact is, when you have one plane transitioning into another plane, you're going to go from a, one value to another. But depending on the surface material, the way that transition looks is going to be different. A perfectly smooth airbrush blend is not always right. If you have a brick or a rock, something like this is going to look a lot more appropriate. Because the surface material just tells you about what you're looking at. So sometimes just being too perfect because you're using a computer can actually work against you. And finally, we are going to use Blocky Smudge. To me, this one feels kind of like using a paintbrush. It's got a bit of a painterly edge. It's also pressure sensitive, so the harder I press, the more stark of an edge I get. I can be softer with it and get a much more smooth result, or bear down a little harder and get sort of a harder edge. But if you look closely at the edge, it is not totally straight. It has a sort of jagged quality to it, which is something that happens when brush strokes get overlapped a lot. I'm not going to say this looks specifically like natural media, but it looks a little less perfect, which sometimes makes paintings look more interesting. So when using any of these, I would still recommend combining it with a eraser tool to give you a little more control. And also just with your normal on-screen blending. You might jump back and forth between using the smudge tool and then touching things up with the paintbrush, the eyedropper, and the eraser tool. And one of the reasons that I'm making this video right now is because I've just been doing a lot of rendering recently. And a lot of it has been for my upcoming series, which is Basic Rendering 2. And this is one I'm really excited about. It is a follow-up to basic Photoshop rendering. And the idea is we're going to take the principles that you learned for observation and tell you how to apply them to imaginary objects with imaginary light. Because ultimately you want to be able to paint realistic materials and complex surfaces, but there's a big gap here between painting a still life from observation and sort of imagining the same type of lighting. So in that series, we're going to be doing tons of rendering and studies and homework assignments and all that. But in the meantime, you might want to just get comfortable using the smudge tool. It is certainly not the only way that I render, but if you've never used the smudge tool, I would just download the file, give these three a try. It's a different way of approaching Photoshop, and I think it can give you some pretty good results. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.